you know, it's interesting when you have a injury, so to speak, and you have a, you know, a knee injury or my hand or, you know, it's an ankle sprain. It's a lot different when you can't see it and somebody doesn't know what's going on outside the lines. Everybody's going through something. Success is not immune to depression. So Kevin, you are now the new face of mental health in the NBA. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? At first, uh, it was a little scary. Um, I think from, from, you know, suffering with anxiety and depression for a long time into having my first panic attack on, on November 5th and not really knowing what that meant to, to fast forwarding being here now. It's changed my, my frame of mind and it really, I really do believe in, in, in writing my piece that everybody is going through something. So knowing that it doesn't discriminate and knowing that I'm trying to change the stigma, not only for you know people in sports, but all over. And I remember talking to my agent and he said, are you sure you want to do this? Because a lot of people are going to talk about it. I said, Jeff. I don't know if anybody will, but you know, just understand, I'm trying to help people. He goes, I get it. If you help one person, if you help one kid, it could be absolutely life-changing and groundbreaking for that kid. Let's talk about the panic attack for a minute because that's when the world got a little glimpse of what was going yeah. on. So take us through what happened that night. Well, it was very scary for me because I, I have always had the anxiety and like a lot of people when, you know, either it's like, you know, for example, you want to go to bed and or you want to go to sleep and you think I have a big game the next day and so what happens you, you, you know you plan your routine you try to go to sleep you get ready and then you dig up the worst things that have happened the last 10 years for you so I think it was a combination of, of things that were going on in my life that led up to that point as well as it was a five and seven start and on November 5th uh, I just remember not quite feeling right uh, I mean, we went through a few plays, there was a timeout, I got to the huddle, and that's when I just, I felt something that I had never felt before. I, could, I couldn't catch my breath. You know, I felt like my mind was completely out, and Ty Lue had said something to me, I told him I'll be right back. I ran in the locker room, I was essentially searching for something that I couldn't find, I didn't know this feeling, and then I just basically uh, ran to our trainer's room, fell on the ground, collapsed, and you know, my heart was jumping out of my chest, and. I couldn't get air to my lungs and, you know, essentially was, was you know, trying to clear my throat, sticking my hand down my throat, trying to get myself Seriously. air. Yeah, so it was... You must a, have been terrified. It was terrifying. I thought I was having a heart attack. I really felt like I was going to die in this moment. I get like, I'm getting hot thinking about it. It was a moment that nobody wants to have, but it was very eye-opening. And then going to the hospital after that, everything checked out and I was basically thinking to myself, well, what happened? I've now come to a point where I just kind of lay all my cards out on the table and say, this is what you get. And having that freedom of mind is something that I've never really had. It's actually given me peace. And sometimes things get worse in order to, to get better. Sometimes there is a rock bottom, but I know that you know, people reaching out for help or talking to someone, it, it, it does really work. And for so long, I put that off thinking I didn't need it because that was my, my playbook when I was young is to suppress it and, uh, you know, be a man. And, uh, you know, I think the masculinity thing is, a, is a, you know, kind of misleading in a lot of ways because when that's ingrained in your mind in the early age, you, you feel that way throughout. You know, I wish I would have had the presence of mind earlier on to face these things, but sure. I think everybody has their moment, their aha moment, or that moment where, um, you know, they're able to, to come forward with these type of things. So now I'm going to ask you what everyone wants to know. What's LeBron doing during this time? Well, I remember the first thing he said to me after that came out was that, you know, he shook my hand on the back of the bus, and, you know, I kind of let everybody get off, and he said, you, you really helped a lot of people today. You helped a lot, not only a lot of kids, but you helped a lot of people. So that was, that was a special moment, but, you know, I couldn't go a few minutes without another person in that community I talk about coming forward and saying, hey, this, this is my experience and I want to share this with you. So it, it was a way of seeing a lot of people are, are being vulnerable mm -hmm. and also, you know, sharing these experiences and, and having that community and saying we need, to, we need to beat down this stigma together. So stigma is still the problem. There's still plenty of guys that have issues, 
and they don't need to come forward to me or to you, right. but they do need to get the help. But there are players out there that think you're soft because you did this. They think DeMar's soft. They're gonna think everybody that comes forward is soft. What do you say to them? Like, it's such a tired hmm. statement. Like, I've, I put my time in in this league. Guys put their time in this league. To be in the NBA, you're not soft. And, and to come forward with this, it's, like I said, that's, that's tired, it's outdated. And it actually, in the end, is probably for me, it was the best thing I did, and it's only gonna help you moving forward. And it doesn't just mean basketball players or anywhere in sports. This isn't everyone and every human thing.